Do you feel like there's a shadow on this side of my face? What's this on it? Stop it. I think this eye is just bigger than that one. Let's see. It is. Mm -hmm. People have said it is. They like say this. my my one eye really bothers them. <laughs> like pirate. <laughs> patch on it honey. there for all the people that my everything. my eye bothers now i can't unsee it honey because your eyes are not different sizes exponentially why is there move your goat move a little bit no it's still there today we're gonna answer some questions it's been a little while since we've sat down and done this how long do you think Oh, um, more than a year. Yeah, probably. for sure. It's been a little while and I don't know, just kind of thought it would be fun to sit down and answer some questions like old times. So we're just going to go through here. See? Oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> the number one question that is, it's always the number one question is more babies. Any more beautiful babies? Are you planning to have more babies? Are you done having kids? You want to answer this for us? <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. I it's a, I feel like it's the first time in my life where I really don't know. I mean, in the past, I've always been like, for sure, yes. But I think it just depends on the day for me. Um, Does it depend on how like chaotic the week has been yes, with the kids? It depends on what type of day we had and that's my <laughs> answer for for that day um i i have a very hard time accepting the fact that cole could be my last baby like i don't feel like i was prepared for it it's kind of like when you're eating a snack and you don't realize you just took the last bite and then you weren't like prepared for eating that last bite <laughs> and then you're sad she wants to eat coal. <laughs> you know, what, you heard I'm, it here you know first. what I'm saying though, right? Like, you know if you're eating the last bite and you're like preparing yourself for the last one. Babies but taste delicious. Mm -hmm. I didn't prepare myself and I just have a hard time wrapping my brain around like him being the last one. I mean, at this point, our level of chaos, you know, it, it gets get incrementally much higher. <laughs> higher and it can always get worse. But incrementally, you know, once we got past like you know, three kids in the house at this point. What's another, you know? All right, done with that question. Now I can like skip through half of the other questions because that's what it's all about. Um, wow. Um, how do you overcome the pressure of what people will think of you, haters, etc.? Whenever I want to post a video, even on stories, I'm crippled by the fear of judgment. It's a great question. Something we talk about a lot is that um, they have, people that are critical really have no direct impact on our life. Um, you know, they don't, um, they don't impact how much, you know, money we make, how happy we are in our own house, but it is easy to say that and um, it's very, very difficult to see a negative comment and just get past it no matter how you know egoless you want to be so I mean I struggle with it really bad it it affects me every day like every hour um, I think about what other people are gonna think of me every time I make a decision and I shouldn't think like that um, you would think that after what like five years of doing this and some very like harsh judgment against our family you know over those years that i would be used to it but i'm not um i'm a people pleaser so i'm extremely sensitive to it and in the end those people don't know us personally they don't know who we are as people they're not involved in our lives so i just think you can't give them too much credit when they're negative especially when they don't know you personally yeah i think as long as you know your truth and you know you live with that like that's all that matters you can't let the opinions of strangers dictate how you do things so if you want to post a video you've just got to put it out there and you've got to do it you know i'm less on social i don't post a lot of like video stuff of myself i'm, I'm mostly on twitter but i still get some you know 
negative responses. Even, even in baseball, they have yeah. haters. <laughs> oh, yeah, trolls are common. Um, so block silly. and move on. Um, yeah. And just Lots focus on what your goals are. Like, go out and do it. How do you keep the spice alive with five kids? <laughs> Uh, well, we do plan date nights as often as we yeah. can. So request a babysitter. I think we've done date nights from the beginning and talked about how important that is in a relationship. And I think I've failed in the past in past relationships of maybe not necessarily putting the priority on a husband and wife time. We try to do date night once a week. Right. And yeah. we've always been fairly consistent with that. There have been times where we've had to go, you know, two or three weeks maybe, but for the most part, like lately, we actually have a date night tonight. Um, so it just kind of, you know, depends, but I think those are very, very important because we get a lot of, um, our, I don't know, talking conversations mm -hmm. during those times and it brings us closer together and, um, conversations that are really hard to have when you have a lot of kids running around and then when you put them to bed and it's just a different feel when you're out and enjoying your time together rather than just being sitting at home you know it's easy late at night to have the tv on to have your phone in your hand so conversations aren't as intimate um as they are when we're at dinner and we don't have as much of a distraction we know what they're we're there for so you know, one of her love language is quality time, and it's really important that I make sure that I spend that time with her, just making sure that we, as a husband and wife, are having those conversations that we need to have. That we're also reinforcing that we do have a really strong bond, and we love each other, and we like to have talk, uh, time to talk. What do you struggle with most as a couple? Um, I would say it's that I'm not here as often as you want me to be here to give you help. You know, it's just a lot of burden on your shoulders. When I'm in work, for those that don't know, I, I work in Austin. I live in Bulverde, so that's like an hour and a half drive most days, uh, one way. So it's a long commute. You know, I work my standard, you know, eight hour day, another hour and a half uh, drive home uh, most days. So it's just a long time for her to be here, you know, with, you know, four or five kids in the house. Yeah, I guess that's um, definitely something that's hard. I mean, I can get a little bit resentful, I think, um, which I think a lot of women can also relate to that because I think they kind of feel, a lot of times you feel the same way, like they get to leave, you know, kid free all the time and you're home and um yes i am very blessed to work from home um, and i don't take that for granted but you know i'm taking care of all of the kids especially during the summer it's really difficult to also work a job um also take care of the kids so i think just managing our time between everything that we have going on is always a struggle and that's why date nights are important to keep all of that in check and um, when I, I can kind of shut down sometimes, so, um, those are extremely important for us so that we don't get off track, you know, the two of us and start like, yeah, harboring things, I guess, just keeping an open line of communication and, and I know that I have to step up when I am home. So on a day like today where I'm off, the first thing I want to check is to see like what she needs, what she wants from her day so that she does get the relief that she needs. So, you know, step up and take more of the chores, take, take some time, get the kids out of the house, just me and them. So she has some time, just her and Cole or letting her go and do some things that she enjoys. So she feels like she has the reward for, you know, the time put in um, when she's kind of handling all the load. So it's, I think it's important as a husband just to recognize that, you know, there's a lot of things that are inevitable in, in this relationship that we have where she's taking a lot on and being respectful of that, not asking her to take the kids, do her work and clean up the entire house, um, stuff like that. Do you, do you ever feel your age gap? <laughs> I feel it way more than she feels it. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I just like to give him a hard time about about things as he's getting older. But I mean, I don't ever like think of us as having like, I mean, we're 11 years apart. 
but that doesn't i don't know the only time it does is when i'm giving him a hard time about his back hurting or his feet hurting or you know needing to take a i nap stand on my feet whatever. all day for you know eight <laughs> straight hours okay but other than that like no i think it, it's uh i think it works in our favor sometimes um you know i think men take a little bit longer to mature uh maybe in my case a little bit more than most um so it, to me it feels like there's a good relationship i i have to be a little younger in order to you know not look ridiculous next to her she's my motivation to go to the gym and work out and eat healthier um because i don't want to look like her dad or <laughs> look like a really out of shape like sugar daddy with her where people are wondering why we're together so i think that's that's the main part it is a little bit tr tricky to say i'm you know 42 and she's 30. Uh, i will be 42. so when will you guys start building your new home with the pandemic uh housing crisis where there's you know fewer houses and the market is really hot right now a bunch of the land around us just got bought up really quick and it was like now or never kind of a thing so we kind of pushed for it and it took, you know, it was a lot of, it was a stressful situation. We knew, we've always known that we wanted to be on land. Like that was our, that's been the goal. And um, when we moved to this house, I mean, we knew that the house we're in now is not going to be our forever home, but we were outgrowing our other house. And after crew passed away, we just needed a fresh like area to be in. And it was hard to be in our old house. So um, when we found this land, it just, it was, felt right and all the land around us is just going um and so we felt like it was our chance to take that and so um we bought it and now it's just deciding on when we're going to build our house on it i mean honestly there's no rush we want to do everything um i'm gonna say the right way but just there's not a rush i would generally say next year probably but it it could be longer we just don't know we've got a lot of other things that we're trying to work on at the same time and so we're comfortable in the house that we're in and also knowing that we have that spot that we want to be forever and um just want to take our time building it so i would guess next year but that's very up in the air if they tell us you know house prices to build are going to be you know 20 percent higher in a year or a year and a half then we might have to try to push but you know, everything happening ahead of our um, personal schedule is, you know. This one says, I still can't believe you guys don't fart around each other. Why is that? Right. Because it's not sexy. And so when you do that around the other person, like, you can't be romantic in a house or in a situation like that. And I don't want to throw anybody under the bus but in past relationships that was not always something that the uh the the woman was um conscious embarrassed or conscious yeah. to not do and i appreciate that she doesn't do that and i try not to do that stuff around her i just you know keep it sexy i mean as far as anyone knows i actually yeah. don't fart <laughs> she doesn't <laughs> And she's, I've never had, I've like caught her in the bathroom going, you know, I don't even, two. I don't even never. poop. Like, she doesn't. Yeah. It just, it just disappears. disappears. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Has anyone in your family or friends been weird about you being YouTubers? Um, I don't know weird is, but, you know, they all secretly watch the videos and, you know. I feel like our family and friends have really been nothing but supportive. Yeah. I mean, I've never felt like judged for having a YouTube channel. I mean, his mom is probably our biggest fan. <laughs> yeah. She tells um, me how good I look and then, you know, all the men in my life tell me how. Yeah. You know, I mean, if anybody's got me, judgment, it's just it's from the me. men in yeah. your life. But I think they're just secretly jealous. They are. They definitely <laughs> are. But, but they, they like to make fun never, of me. Like, I know a lot of people, um, you know, when they started, they've gotten a lot of like flack from co-workers and you know whatnot and not just like joking like you like they quit their job to do youtube and they'll make fun of them and um that's on them because 
Yeah. I mean, if you really want to do something, you can make a living out of it. And I think people like to do that. Oh, well, who are you to be on YouTube? Um, but everybody's anybody. on Facebook, everybody's on Instagram, but everybody's on Twitter. anybody can start a YouTube channel, you yeah. know? Like, Furthermore, you should, if you want If to. you want to do a YouTube channel, go for it. Like, there's nothing yeah. stopping you. And I just, I don't, yeah, I don't understand why people, <laughs> like, judge other people for... Yeah. I think it's just an insecurity in themselves, really. Has Jeff ever wanted you to quit social media because people suck and are so rude? Never. No, he hasn't. No. I've wanted to quit yeah. probably every day, but he's the one that keeps me going. I think every time you do something, you do enough of it, you lose your passion, especially when people start to come after you that don't know you and have like petty reasons to be critical of you. Um, so I think that all starts to wear at you at some point, and at some point you start to question, is it worth it to continue to do this? And I just don't want other people to affect our lives in that way where they get you to quit something that you enjoy doing and something that like you, you do have, you, like you make a living off of this. You've been able to not um, go back to nursing, right? Which you were a registered nurse. You've not had to uh, go back to nursing. Financially, we're doing well, so I just want you to continue to do it because deep down, I think there's a lot of people that still love and support you and care about our family and who we are. What are each of your non-negotiable sin of your marriage? What does that mean? What is your what? What are, you, what are each of your non-negotiable sins in your marriage? So, uh, non-negotiable would be having an affair or, a, you know, a uh, relationship outside of our marriage, whether it is full to completed or just like an intentional, um, you know, like texting, you know, another girl or messaging another girl. I would never do that. I would consider that to be strikes for her to end our marriage and I would never tolerate her texting another guy uh, or anything beyond that. I think those are pretty locked in the stone. Yeah, I mean talking to somebody else is emotionally cheating. Yeah. I mean, we've both been through that in the past, so it's not a like, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't tolerate it. Did you ever think your relationship wouldn't work? Um, I think when you've had a failed relationship, it's always in the back of your mind. I think we've, embrace that we're not going to let our marriage fail um but anybody can screw it up like if we were to do things and engage in you know other relationships while we were together uh, you know we couldn't survive that no matter how much we like committed to our marriage so um i've never felt truly concerned i mean after after crew uh after crew passed that was the only time when we weren't communicating as much. I think it was both of us just trying to get through that that few weeks, months, and it was very difficult. And that's the only time I've been concerned. I think when you have a life event like that happen, it's either gonna make you stronger or it's gonna tear you apart. So that was probably the only point I've been worried, but we got through that you know, fairly quickly where I wasn't too concerned about us. Yeah, I remember, I don't know who it was and it doesn't matter, but before we left the hospital, somebody told us like, we were gonna have to fight really hard for our marriage. Um, because I, I, you know, I don't know the percentage, but I know it's pretty high after you lose a child, like marriages don't always survive. And so with that in mind, like we had to work really hard. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it was hard for a little while, but I needed him to be able to grieve and cope. And I think at first, like you, I grieved and still do grieve alone. Like that's where I do a lot of my grieving. And so instead of pushing him away, we had to learn how to like communicate and grieve together rather than just being alone. Yeah. I had to pull her out of, you know, some times when she just wasn't talking a lot. And I think we still, you know, I still am affected by uh, Cruz's absence every day. Every day. Oh yeah. We're not, that doesn't mean that we are over it. It's just navigating it at the beginning 
it was just like a whole new ballpark, like yeah. starting over and trying to figure out how to navigate a life after living through something so horrific, like, and I mean, we still are working on it. We always will be working on it. There's, there's always going to be that loss there, no matter what we do. So even if we feel like very happy, you know, um, on a daily basis, it's just never a complete happiness with his absence. So we've learned to deal with it. We have more smiles than tears today, but you know, sometimes you just, you know, grief is one of those things that comes at you in waves. And sometimes you're just very em emotional someday. I'll drive by, um, you know, his, uh, the, resting place yeah um and it's it's hard sometimes i stop by i don't tell her um as often as i stop by as i sh as i do but just i just need to sit there for a few minutes and get emotional talk to him a little bit and it gets me gets me back at least i can start to kind of reframe things and then we're constantly looking for things that tell us that you know he's okay and that life's okay the cardinal you know i never saw cardinals before he passed uh, I've written about, written about this several times. I see cardinals all over the place now. Uh, often when I'm thinking about him or I talk about him, I'll, a cardinal will appear. So that's just a signal to me that um, he's still with us. Um, so, yeah. I'm glad we were able to sit down and do this. I know that it's been a little bit too long probably. and um, I would love to maybe start picking up the camera more often. Thank you guys for continuing to follow and support us, you know. Uh, we still receive, I still receive messages, not as often as she does, but messages that are positive and encouraging and um, we're very grateful for that and, you know, yeah. Can you say bye, Cole? Say bye-bye. We haven't learned that yet. Can you say bye-bye? Look here. Look here. Look here. You're embarrassing me. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <gasps>